We're talking a little bit more in depth about object-oriented programming and classes, and there are three primary design principles that really motivate the use of object-oriented programming. And those are inheritance, encapsulation, and polymorphism. So we're gonna go through these one at a time and talk about an example of each one of these three things and how they help us motivate uh, or, or give us an intention in which we can use object-oriented programming with Python. So the first one of these subjects is inheritance, or the first one of these design principles is inheritance. And inheritance is when some class is based upon another class. It builds off the existing class structure in terms of having all of those attributes and having all of those methods, but also uh, taking, taking advantage of those existing behaviors, but sort of specializing uh, with the addition of some additional behaviors or attributes of its own. So I like to abstract these ideas with real world examples and for these three design principles I like to put things in terms of a car. So we could classify a Toyota Prius as being a member of the class hybrid car which inherent, inherits all of the attributes and methods from a superclass called car. That is uh, the hybrid car class is um, a child of the car class and that means that it inherits all of the attributes and methods that a regular car would have. In this case an attribute uh, might be wheel size and a method might be uh, drive forward, right? That's the functionality of the car. Um, Every car has a wheel size or multiple wheel sizes, um, but there are some things that a Toyota Prius might have being a hybrid car that regular cars don't, and that justifies it having its own uh, subclass that inherits all of the car class, but then specializes to itself specifically. Um, and this might be an attribute like battery life or a method such as recharge battery. So we see that this, this child or this subclass hybrid car inherits all of the usual attributes of a car, wheel size, the method drive forward, uh, the, the attribute number of wheels, the attribute number of doors, all of these things from the car class are still valid. We just want to specialize that class a little bit through inheritance. Um, and add some additional attributes such as battery life or recharge battery. So when we're working with classes, this sort of blueprint of a class, a generic class like car, uh, can be inherited by specialized versions of that class. And it allows us to really increase our reusability uh, for each of these classes. I don't have to define a hybrid car class from scratch, rather I can specialize the already existing car class. The second of these design principles that's really important to object-oriented programming is encapsulation. And that is uh, the practice of hiding the inner workings of a class and really only exposing what's necessary for the user to be able to use that class or that data type. Uh, this helps us not only keep our code bases clean and compartmentalized, but it also allows someone who is using your class or your data type to be able to use that class without having to know how each, each and every attribute is calculated or having to know uh, the actual code that drives each of the method. So by encapsulating, we can use classes to encapsulate uh, different data types and summarize how those data types can be used. Re returning back to our example of cars, right? When someone goes to drive a car, you don't need to know exactly how each part inside of the engine works to be able to drive that car effectively. Rather, you only need to know 
that the gas pedal and brake pedal and steering wheel exist and have some idea of the inputs that you will need to have each of those functions or methods work appropriately. Um, so for example, you don't need to know how the engine works or the transmission works to actually make the wheels turn when you push the gas pedal. You only need to know how to push the gas pedal and when you should push that gas pedal. So by encapsulating a class or a data type, we're giving a user the ability to use it without having to have some grandiose knowledge of exactly how it works. So encapsulation, uh, just to review, it does two things. One, it gives us the ability to hide the inner workings and keep our code bases clean and compartmentalized. And the other thing that it does is it gives our users the ability to use the class without having to know all of the nitty gritty details of how each method works or how each attribute is described. The third of the design principles that we need to talk about is called polymorphism. And when we're talking about polymorphism, the, the standard definition of polymorphism is something that's able to take multiple forms. And we can use classes to do this in a programming sense. And when we talk about polymorphism in programming, we're talking about uh, the provision of a single interface that can describe or represent or be used for uh, entities of slightly different types. Um, this enables us to use a generic car class to describe cars that might have some small differences which aren't enough to actually uh, necessitate an entire subclass or uh, child class like we did with the hybrid car uh, talking about inheritance. An example of this, again going back to cars, is that my generic car class might have an attribute such as spoiler color, where there is some color assigned to the cars which actually have spoilers. But we know that not all cars come with spoilers. So we can use that attribute on the cars that do have spoilers and not use that attribute on cars that don't have spoilers. Uh, in Python specifically, uh, if there's a car that's being described by the, an object, an instance of a car being described by our car class, we can simply assign a none value to that spoiler class. In other languages, if you're familiar, we might call this a null value. But in general, not all cars have spoilers, and we can just put a none data type uh, as the spoiler color attribute if a car doesn't have a spoiler. This polymorphism, right, our car class has an ability to represent slightly different cars, right? Cars that are in slightly different forms. In our example, a car with or a car without a spoiler without having to redefine a class. And when we get a little bit farther into defining classes a few lessons ahead, we'll talk about exactly how to implement polymorphism through the use of constructors for each of our objects. And hopefully seeing some of the underworkings will be familiar to her to us um, using something like the range object where uh, by giving the range object a different number of parameters it will create a very similar object that works just a little differently based on how many parameters are given to that range function call to create a range object and um, how each of them are used. So that's it for a brief introduction to OOP. We're going to have about five or six lessons that further describe object-oriented programming and how we can implement it specifically.